Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you three simple, easy, and delicious potato meals that are gonna help keep you full and satisfied throughout the day and help get you to your health and weight loss goals. Now before we get to these meals, I wanna just talk about potatoes for a second because yes, there are probably so many of you who already know how amazing potatoes are for our health and wellness, but there's probably a good handful of you who maybe came across this video and you're thinking, wait a minute, like I thought we weren't supposed to eat carbs. Isn't a potato like a ton of carbs? Isn't that gonna make me fat? Isn't that gonna be bad for my health? And I'm here to tell you, no. Listen, carbohydrates are amazing for our bodies. We are meant to eat them. They are our body's preferred source of fuel. And when I say carbohydrates, I'm talking about things like potatoes and rice and beans and quinoa and lentils and barley and just all of those amazing grains, fruits and veggies. Those are the carbohydrates we are meant to eat. When you start to put things, again, like sour creams and cheeses and, and slather oil all over everything, that's when these carbohydrates become bad for us. Things like pizza and potato chips and um, cakes and donuts, those things are unfortunately lumped into you know this carbohydrate box, which really they're all mostly fat. That's the largest uh, macronutrient present in those foods usually is fat, not carbohydrates, but they are lumped in that carbohydrate box and they give carbs a bad rap. But again, those aren't the things we should be eating. We should be eating the whole plant food carbs. Okay, I think you get it. Just wanted to make that clear for those of you who don't quite understand. These plant food carbohydrates are super low in calories, very feeling and satisfied, and the potato is the number one carbohydrate that you can eat to be satisfied and full and help get you to your health and weight loss goals. So let's go ahead, get to these meals. I can't wait to show you. So the first meal we're gonna be making is my Cajun potatoes. I'm just taking a whole bunch of two bite potatoes and cooking them in my Instant Pot for about eight minutes and then when they're done, I like to slice these in half and then just pop off the skin. This is so easy to do. Now, you don't have to pop off the, off the skin, but I would so the spices stick to the potatoes. So I just take the skin really um, off really quick, put these on a baking sheet, a non-stick baking sheet, and then I mix up my spices. What I'm adding in here is Cajun seasoning, garlic, salt or garlic granules, or garlic powder, I should say, um, and then paprika. And I put the recipe in the description box for you, but just mix that up and then sprinkle that on top of the potatoes. These are nice and sticky, no need for oil. And then you just wanna make sure, you know you're coating the potatoes really well, mix it all in, massage it, whatever you wanna do, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> and then um, pop these in the oven. I do 350 degrees for about 25, 30 minutes. And then when I'm ready to eat them, I love to put them on top of a large bed of lettuce. Usually it's spinach. And then I prefer to pour my Hungry Vegan Mama dressing all over this. It's oil-free. I have the link in the description box. And this is such a good meal. It's so delicious. There you go. Next, we are making such a good uh, potato curry. The first thing I'm doing is putting in my Instant Pot about half of a large onion and then two garlic cloves minced up. Now, if you don't have an Instant Pot, that's fine. You can make this on the stovetop if you'd like. After I saute the onion and garlic in veggie broth, I'm gonna go ahead and add in about three to four Yukon Gold potatoes. You can use any potatoes and you can use any amount. It just depends on what you want. I like about three to four. I just go ahead and chop these up. You can peel them if you'd like. I don't like to. Um, after that, I'm adding in some tomato paste and about five ounces of tomatoes. Now you can use fresh tomatoes if you'd like. Then I'm adding in one can of light coconut milk. Now if you don't wanna do coconut milk because of the fat content, um, you can do any other plant milk. And then we're just gonna add our spices, which are curry powder, garam masala, and turmeric. And again, I have the 
recipe in the description box with the amounts in there. Um, and it's probably good if you add all this, all the spices with the onion and garlic. I know, but you know, I like to mix things up. So it all works out in the end. So um, then I go ahead and throw frozen peas in there and a whole bunch of spinach. And then I love to cook this for about 15 minutes on high pressure. And then when it's done, it comes out so, so good. I like to take a potato masher and mash up the potatoes to make them creamier or to make the whole thing creamier. And oh, uh, this comes out delicious. Now on to this white bean and potato chili. I'm throwing in some chili powder, chili flakes, oregano, onion, garlic, paprika. We got cumin in there. Um, again, this is all in the description box. I'm throwing in cilantro and then potatoes. Now you can do as many potatoes as you want and as much white beans as you want. I went ahead for this recipe right here. I did two chopped up Yukon Gold potatoes. I'm adding in about a cup of frozen corn. You can use fresh if you would like. And then after this, I'm adding in about two cans of white beans. Um, now again, that, well, first of all, let me say this is no salt added. So I'm just putting them in right after I open the can. If you have salt added in your cans, I recommend that you strain the white beans, and then you can use white beans that you soak overnight if you'd like to, but this is gonna definitely be the fastest. But with this recipe, if you want more beans, you can put more beans. If you want more potatoes, you can put more potatoes. So um, I typically will put in a, quite a bit of potatoes because I'd rather this be potato heavy than white bean heavy. Uh, but today, for this video, obviously, I only had two potatoes left. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you two potatoes. But again, it's your choice. We're going to go ahead and add in an entire carton, which is 32 ounces of veggie broth. This is, again, low, low sodium. I would definitely recommend that. Then just stir it up, put your lid on. I cook this at high pressure, about 15 minutes again. And then when it is done, I do manual release and take the top off, stir it. And then again, I use my potato masher to make it really creamy. Um, you can take the skin off the potatoes if you want. I, I like them on there, but this comes out so good, so creamy, and we all love it. All right. How about those meals? I feel like I feel like I have potato in my teeth. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about making these videos is I can kind of pick and taste things as I make it. So anyway, um, before you leave this video, I do want to mention I included at the end of this uh, a live that me and Ryan Adams from Natural Weight Loss Mastery did over on Instagram last week. If you're unfamiliar with Ryan, he is an excellent vegan weight loss coach. He's actually the coach that I used at the beginning of my journey back in 2019. For 90 days, I used him and he helped get me on my feet. So over on Instagram, I asked you guys to throw all your questions at him and he will answer them over on our live. And for those of you who don't have Instagram or maybe you missed it, I'm gonna go ahead and include that live um, over the next couple weeks. It's a pretty long live, so I have to kinda break it up. So I'm gonna add that again at the end of this video. If you wanna check it out, make sure you stick around to watch it. It's really great. And that is it for me today. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment if you enjoyed it, if you'd like to see more videos like this. You guys are always so great at that. And also, don't forget, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. And otherwise, that is it for me today. I will be seeing you next week on Monday. I can't wait to see you then. Talk to y'all soon, bye. And we can maybe answer some of those, or you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know a lot of people really wanna hear from you. Um, so I'm just gonna jump right in because I wanna try to keep this to like an hour. Because uh, mm -hmm. my husband's watching my kids and I don't know how long that's gonna last. So um, let's just get right into it. This first question. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who don't know Ryan, let me just say this. He is an amazing vegan uh, weight loss coach, if not the best. I mean, I'm kind of biased, but I, I'm pretty sure you're, you're like the best. And um, he has an awesome YouTube channel. So if you are not subscribed, I highly recommend 
um, going and subscribing and also following his Instagram page because he gives so much information for free. I mean, I, I've seen so many of your videos, but there's so many more that I've never seen um, because you have so much awesome information. So if you want to find um, an answer to your question, I would almost guarantee that he has it on that, that channel. So I would go and subscribe and just have a blast binge watching all his videos um, if you haven't already. So um, let's go ahead and we're going to start with the first question. It says, is there a way to kickstart weight loss? I've been doing this for a few months and I'm losing motivation. Well, there's two things that immediately spring to mind there for me. It's a good question. The first is when you talk about kickstarting weight loss, to me, that immediately is on more of the strategy side, more of the action side. Mm -hmm. And then there's what you said about motivation, which if I just heard the first part of the question, it would totally change my answer. But then there's what you said about motivation, which is also something I've spoken about. I know you've heard me talk about it quite a lot, T. It, motivation is one of those things because it's so feeling based. It's very ethereal. It comes and it goes because it's a feeling like feelings do. And so there isn't really a, a permanence, uh, for want of a better word, a consistency to motivation. But then you're also talking about kickstarting weight loss. So that's more with a strategy side. So presumably the person that's asked this question, obviously we don't sadly have so much context, but presumably the person that started this question, they are trying to lose weight right now. But there is a difference between trying to lose weight um, and losing some weight, but then stopping because you lack motivation. That, and that's a big difference from trying to lose weight and you're not losing any weight whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to understand about that person. So let's say that person is currently trying to lose some weight, but they're not, which is, I think, the first part of the question. In that case, we've got to do a full... In that case, we've got to do a full diet diagnosis, obviously. Tia, the thing you and I talk about so much, and we don't always say this term, but the thing we're always talking about, and it goes across the board with our advice, is fiber. Fiber yeah. is just, we are so deficient. The US, re really deficient in fiber. The UK, frankly, isn't, isn't too far behind, actually, Tia. But we are so fiber deficient, and fiber, from a weight loss perspective, is a wonderful nutrient in its own right. But it's not just that. So many of the foods that are high in fiber, these whole nutrient-rich plant foods, so many of these foods that are high in fiber also have so many other wonderful qualities too, yeah. aside from just the fiber component. So the thing I would say, if you are struggling with weight loss right now, you know, it completely depends where you are. It completely depends where you're at in that journey, whether you've got five pounds to lose or a hundred pounds to lose, there's so many differences. The one thing I'll say for the general person just starting out is there's a very good chance that your diet is deficient in fiber. You wanna be looking at throwing as much fiber into your diet as you can take and I say that, I actually say that with a bit of apprehension because bloating, gas, digestive yeah. issues, we all know, yeah. we've, all, yeah. we've all done it. If you haven't had beans in a very long time, we've all had <laughs> issues with this. You know, Tia, without me saying it, you know. And well, so yes, I do. You, you have to be careful, but fiber is the key to that. Motivation, like I say, it's fleeting, it comes and it goes. You need to capitalize, up, capitalize on it. But the thing I'll say about motivation, my most important advice on this, is don't have unrealistic expectations about it. Motivation is the spark to the engine. It's the ignition. Don't think it's going to be there forever. You need habits and discipline to take over. Mm -hmm. And that comes with consistency and, re and repetition. Tia will attest to this. Yeah. And actually, you're bringing up, um, you just released a video. I think I was watching it yesterday, a couple days ago. You were sick and you were talking about how, um, you know, you could, you could easily, not, you were doing like a video every day for 30 days. And you could have easily decided like, oh, I'm not going to do this. I'm sick. I don't feel well but you have discipline and you were able to push through and not push yourself too much. You still rested and took care of yourself, but you wanted to get that video done and you did. Um, and the same thing goes with, you know, um, let's say going for walks every day. If someone commits to, to going for a walk every day, I actually do 10,000 steps every day and there are so many days where I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And that's, I think that's normal for people, but I made that commitment to myself. Yes, some days I'm motivated. Some days I'll watch your video or I'll watch it, I'll see someone's Instagram page and I am like, oh my gosh, I'm putting my shoes on, Jordan, watch the kids, I'm going walking. But there mm. are some days where I don't want to do it, but I do it anyway because I made that commitment to myself and I have discipline. And it, there's 
I, before you and I did any type of coaching, which by the way, some of you know, but some of you don't know, um, when I first started this journey, Ryan was my coach for 90 days. And he really helped me with the mental and emotional side of things. One of those things being just having discipline. Um, yes, again, it's great to be motivated, but you got to have that discipline. And so um, before coaching with you, I think I was someone who looked for motivation all the time um, to get me going or to get me back on the train, you know. Mm. And uh, now, like I was just saying, I just I love motivation. It's great to have. It's great to keep you going or get you going, but it's not what you need to get to your end goal. You've got to have discipline so um, if i if i can tia very very quickly because i know we spent already quite a long time on just this yeah. first question alone but i i think one of the misunderstandings that people have when they're very early on in the weight loss journey is they think that the people who have completed the journey or who are let's say further ahead because the journey never ends as you know but those that mm -hmm. are further ahead in that health journey and weight loss journey one of the misunderstandings is that that person whoever it is whether it's yourself whether it's myself anyone online youtube instagram whatever the misunderstanding is that that person always is motivated. And we're yeah. here to tell you, just based on what you've just said, no. we're absolutely not. There's nothing no. magical about me, and there's nothing magical about you. Well, there's a few things magical about you, but we're- My uh, hair is yeah, up. <laughs> if you want, But the difference is, I try, I'm still a human, I try not to let my emotions and feelings decide what is best for me. Yeah. And that's what, dis really, there's a lot of ways to define discipline. That's what it means to me. It's separating emotions and my mood and my headspace and motivation, quote unquote, from the actions that need to get done to take me further ahead to the person I want to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And the more you are consistent with discipline, the your these things become it's your habit. It's your new habits. And that's the thing you want to I and mean, we can know all there is to know about how to lose weight. But if we don't get rid of the bad habits, it's not going to stick and stay. And so the way to get rid of bad habits, the way to get new habits, this is just what I've learned, is to stay disciplined. Because the more consistent you are with it, it becomes a new habit. It compounds. Um, it's a snowball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Love it. That was great. That was a great answer for me. Okay, bye then. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Thanks. No. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, this next question, and maybe we could both answer it. I don't know if it was for me. Um, but you also lost weight. I mean, this is how you kind of came upon this whole thing. Um, the next question is, how long did it take you to lose weight? So maybe you can explain um, your whole little weight loss situation. Yeah, so for those that I'll do it very quickly, concise bullet points, which is hard for me to deal with my mouth, as you know. <laughs> but uh, for anyone that doesn't know, you're just running into me for the first time. I was what many of you will, many of you will understand this description, some of you won't. I was the classic gym bro. So I was this 18, 19 year old kid at university, lifting weights, eating, and this is no exaggeration, three chicken breasts a day, can of tuna, straight from the can this was. I was having the whey protein shakes, all the animal products and whatnot. I was a gym bro, I was working out in the gym, I was making those gains, man, I was making those gains. And um, it did work, I did actually, you know, it's, I've got to be fair on this, I did gain some muscle with it. But as you'll have seen from my photos, um, I, I put on some fat with it. I put on some serious fat with it and I just got carried away and I got lost in it. And after about two, three years of doing that, I was um, 40, uh, actually 45 pounds heavier than I am today. No, 40 right now, heavier than I am today. And I just started getting more and more comments like, Ryan, you've done well with this. You have bulked up a bit. You're no longer that skinny kid, but you've taken it too far. You've gone to extremes. I mean, my neck was like this to you and I was walking around like this, honestly. <laughs> It, it wasn't attractive. I, know I, don't, people. I don't know why. Yeah, you see them a lot, right? The gym bros. And, um, yeah. you know, I learned a lot from that experience. And there's still things that I think I was right about back then. But my goodness, do I look back and go, Ryan, you plonker, as we say in the UK. What were you doing, mate? That was awful. And so I happened to cry. Veganism went boom on YouTube in about 2015. Uh, people like Vegan Gains came to the mm -hmm. fore and that sort of thing. And I wasn't actually an avid follower of his but there was just more and more vegan content popping on YouTube. I saw a couple of those videos. This was also back in the day where blogs, you remember those, Tia? I know you've yeah. got a great one. 
but they're not that's pretty rare for someone to have a thriving blog like yours that doesn't happen much right blogs were still a thing back in 2015 and i was reading all these articles and it planted pun the pun the proverbial seed and then within about a month or two i was like right i'm fully going vegan not just this plant-based thing i added more plants into my diet after i discovered those things but i fully went vegan uh, about six years ago now and um I see my weight loss as a vegan in two separate phases. I had an initial weight loss where I lost 25 pounds in the following uh, three months, 12 weeks actually to be particular, uh, after going vegan. So this took me to about October 2015. And then I lost about 15 to 20 pounds in like two years after that, so extremely slowly. So that's how I break down my journey. What about you? Mm -hmm. Um. I, I mean, just to kind of encompass the whole thing, I lost 50 pounds in about 10, 11 months. Um, and I think I averaged yeah. about a pound and a half a month. I mean, some, I mean, a week. A week, um, yeah. So some, yeah, not a month. Uh, although right now, <laughs> it's about that slow. But um, yeah, in some weeks I would lose, you know, three pounds, but that, that's being generous. Um, in some weeks I'd lose nothing. And you know, I mean, you were with me. There was there was a handful of times where three weeks would go by and I would lose nothing. Absolutely. And I would be like, Ryan, Ryan, like, I'm, and you were like, just stay patient. I don't think you're on a plateau. And then, sure enough, that next week, I would drop three pounds. Um, and so, yeah, I, I I would say as a, you know, at the time I was 39, a 39 year old female, um, one and a half pounds per week was great for me. That's no joke. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the thing I try to tell people. I know a lot of, especially women, want weight loss quick. 